Hi, everybody, and today's show is a very special show. Um, our special guest is Laura Whitmore, who I call the pioneer in promoting women in music. And what she is involved with are two exceptional uh, venues, the Women's International Music Network and the very famous She Rocks Awards held every year, which uh, give awards to famous women, mus women musicians or engineers or songwriters, uh, the spectrum of music area. Some of the names involved who have been honorees or winners are Susie Quattro, Nancy Wilson of Heart, Cherry Curry, Cindy Blackman of Santana, The Go-Go's, The Bangles, Orianthi, um, Melissa Etheridge, Pat Benatar, B-52s, she, Sheila E., Chaka Khan, Ronnie Spector, Lita Ford, and etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I think what's important uh, to know is that Judith and I have done two 45 books on the history of the 45 records, and we always put very famous women's musicians uh, being displayed in the book, and our life has been surrounded with this. In fact, we were on a serious radio show, uh, Judith and I, with Mark Goodman of MTV and Alan Light on album covers, and there was a we got to a point where they were talking about the the, P, the Peter Blake supposedly designed Beatles uh, Sgt. Pepper cover. But what Judith brought out in the interview, which floored everybody, was that which is true. Peter Blake didn't design that album cover; it was done with his wife a woman designer, very famous woman designer. And Judith brought it up. Everybody's throwing their papers up, trying to fact find, <laughs> fact find this thing. And she was right. And uh, that's the way Laura, Judith is. you would have loved that because- yeah, Laura, awesome. you would have loved that. I it mean, was just she, a, a, another, you know, I just want to say it was just another, you know, um, way of ignoring women and and their and their contributions in whatever area in this in this in this instance it was in the area of um art and design you know and it was the beatles cover mm -hmm. she was she played an, a huge role in that in that design and they totally yeah. ignored it i want to also mention that judith was interviewed in the women's international music network uh that side of it in 2019 on the life of of Judith, of which she's my partner, and is really, I think she was the first woman album designer to be interviewed, right, Laura? Maybe? Yeah, and, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, it's really wonderful. So, I experienced I, a great deal of discrimination because of being a woman in the world of music, by the yeah, way. Yeah. You know, so and, there and you go. So, I'm so grateful to Laura for what she's. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful, yes, Laura, what you did we, for that uh, promoting. And we need to hear more about yeah. that. Yeah, and I, I guess we'll start off by talking about Laura's life. Laura, what got you into, first of all, into the music <laughs> area and the She Rocks thing? Why don't you bring in from the How beginning? far back do you want me to go? <laughs> no, go, 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 go for it. Go for wherever it. Wherever you want to start. Yeah, whatever wherever you, you want to start. I mean, okay, so, um, you know, I, I've been working in marketing in the music industry for many, many years, and I started... Um, doing um, some marketing and writing, working with Guitar World Magazine. Um, this was in probably like 2010 or so. Um, and I started writing a blog um, for them, interviewing female musicians, female guitar players. Um, and I called the blog uh, Guitar Girled. And it appeared in guitarworld.com. Um, and as I started talking to more and more women in the industry, um, you know, it sort of opened my eyes. I was like, wow, like there's so many great players. They don't have a voice in like a big, you know, media uh, outlet. And yeah. uh, I kept hearing the same stories over and over again, you know, like, oh, they thought I was the merch girl. They thought I didn't know how to plug my gear in, like <laughs> all these stories. So, um, you know, as that went on and on, I started thinking about like, wow, like, you know, I don't really know all the women in the industry. Like we should have an event to get us all together, you know? Right. Wow. So um, I started thinking about it and I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll plan like a breakfast at the NAMM show to just bring the women in the industry together. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how the idea started, just to bring people together. And from yeah. my own ignorance, too, of not knowing a lot of I had been in the musical instrument side of the industry for, you know, probably like 20 years at that point, And I, I didn't really um, know the, the other women out there. So 
Um, so then that sort of evolved into the very first She Rocks Awards, which was uh, 20, I guess it was 2013. I started the Women's International Music Network in 2012 to sort of mm -hmm. be the parent organization of the She Rocks Awards. And uh, the first one was a breakfast and it was really great. And Orianthi was our first performer ever ah. at the She Rocks Awards. And uh, since then, she has gone on to be a huge supporter and co-hosted with me one year, wow. and has appeared many times at the awards, along with so many other women. And, and as you know, like uh, about three years in, we leaped to the, to the Friday night um, during NAM in, in Anaheim, California. And we've been an evening, a huge evening event ever since that has grown and grown. So mm. well, that's kind of how I got into, um, you know, supporting women and doing more and more to, to um, just bring a spotlight to issues that women face in the industry and giving a bigger voice um, to women in the industry. So mm -hmm. it's been, uh, it's so it been all started years now. It's our 10th anniversary in 2022. Hey, so, all right. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, and it all crazy. started with food. <laughs> started, with, started with a little breakfast, a little nosh, you know? So, yeah. That's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. So inspiring for, to us women in, 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 in this field. And, and I, think you, I think, you know, you probably, I could say that you're inspiring to all women. You know, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, it's interesting what Judith brought out to me, and I, I saw myself, was the fact that you not only give it to women musicians, but also like sound engineers, songwriters, the whole spectrum of music, which is really great. You know, it's not just women guitar players, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's really good. I think uh, there are a lot of women in these areas, like, like a, a Judith, for instance, in album design. You know, I mean, there's different areas, songwriting and engineering and whatever. Um, I think that's a great thing that you've done to widen the spectrum of these uh, honorees or awards, you know? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's really um, important to me that yeah. we honor women behind the scenes and we um, really look at creating a diverse program every year of people from all different walks of the industry. So educators and record label people and people working at a music retailer, whatever it is, because um, I feel like, you know, they're all rock stars in their own way and and i think for one of my goals with the event and with the organization is to make you know women who are looking for careers aware mm -hmm. of like what's out there and shine a spotlight on all these role models all these women who are out there doing it right. so people can think like yeah i could do that you know look look at these women doing it and, and hearing yeah. their stories you know so yeah I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, i mean we work with joan jett you know for many years on her albums yeah. and and she's a very big women supporter. And you know her, her drive towards women, getting rights yeah. to music and life, period. Um, but um, I, I think it's important. Uh, your event also inspires women in music. Yeah. I think it's a big, uh, helpful thing for women in general uh, uh, seeing this event and say, hey, I could do that. You know, making them feel like, you know, you can get yeah. out there and do it, right? Yeah, I mean, I want like people to walk away feeling like totally energized, totally inspired. Like, and here's these women, like some of them are very famous, right? And you hear their yeah. stories and you're like, wow, you know, <laughs> I can't believe like she had to go through that and she had to go through that and, and look where she is. And they yeah. and they are very open about, you know, some of the things that they've had to face and what kept them going. And, um, you know, it's, it, it is, it's inspiring for me too to hear these stories yes. and yeah. be able yeah. to bring them to people. So, well, you're yeah. helping all these people and you're helping women in the world and, and things like that. So it all ties together. Yeah. And uh, I was also, it's, I was always struck by the number of women. I mean, I was looking at the past winners, winners or honorees and there's a laundry, a long laundry list of women, right? Yeah. Uh, Laura. Yeah. yeah. We've, I mean, it's our 10th year. So we've, I mean, we've, we probably honor between like 10 and 15 women a year, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you figured that adds up. <laughs> every year is so different too. You know, yeah. I try to make the program different anyway every year because I, I, a lot of people come back and I don't want them to be like, I know what's going to happen. But, um, but I also think like each one is unique because of the women that we honor. Mm -hmm. um, and I do call them honorees because it's not a contest, right? It's right, like right, right. It's over somebody else. This right. is like, Right. We're honoring you for what you've done and how you've inspired other people and how you, you know, what you've achieved. Um, but but yeah, I mean, over time, we've, we've really um, 
had amazing women walk the stage and we do it like you know we've been doing it at the house of blues actually in 2022 we're moving it to uh, another oh, space really? but wow yeah yeah but it's still right. a great stage and people come up oh that's and, great you know, wow it's, it's so i'd like to ask you a question laura about you know with this pandemic that we're all living through if that's had any effect on how you know you're 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 going to go about doing it this time around 2022 <sighs> Yeah, you know, in 2021, we did a virtual She Rocks Awards. Mm -hmm. where we live streamed the whole thing um, with some partners and we had um, amazing participation in that. I mean, that did remove some like logistical barriers, right? Because people yeah. could participate from where, wherever they were. Um, this year, we're going back to a live event. We're crossing our fingers, um, hoping that everything is going to work out. But yeah. we are also continuing to like really um invest in and create like an amazing live program like like a live streamed program so that uh -huh. people uh -huh. from anywhere can watch it and it'll be like a premiere event that way too so we learned a lot from just doing the online event and we're going to incorporate some of that stuff into the live event so it'll kind of be more hybrid in 2022 um, we also did like downsize the venue a little bit because like it's a huge investment yeah. Um, and I honestly like didn't feel like maybe this isn't the right thing to bring, you know, 800 people into a room together. Mm -hmm. right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so we are, we're going to like a little bit smaller venue with more space for people and um, a more like individual spaces for, you know, the, the honorees to have dressing rooms and things like that. So it's, I think we're trying to be really sensitive to what's going on in the world, but we yeah. still like, I really want to do a live event because our 10th anniversary, I want to be there. That's and a I big think one. a lot of people want to be there, yeah. um, but we yeah. are trying to be like very sensitive to what's going on. And oh, you so also cool. open up nominees to people. I got an email, uh, you know, I could, yeah. I could nominate somebody. Tell us about nominating people. Yeah. I mean, it's great when people nominate somebody, we don't charge like other award shows you to nominate anyone. Yeah. We just want to, we want, Want people to tell us about other women that inspire them you know we don't know everybody that's out right. there in the world right. doing right. great things so um we just have a form on our website where you can uh just i think it's you know the women.com slash nominations or something like that um you can find it and um you know just nominate women that you think are, are role models and inspire others and have done great things in their career in their area and we go through all of them and, and take a look and see, you know, who's been honored. And, you know, we sort of build the program in a way that it's not a vote. Like, you know, if you get 30 people to nominate you, it doesn't matter. It's not really about right. that. It's more <laughs> about us looking at like, you know, what different types of people do we honor? Who has done really amazing things? How do we make this program feel like yeah. really well-rounded and expose like really cool stuff that women are doing out there yeah, yeah, in yeah. the world of music. So, so yeah. you're approaching the 10th anniversary uh, yeah. this year of she -Rock. Are you seeing then over that course of time to sort of an evolution in the experiences in the industry that women are having? Um, are things starting to change and, and what kind of changes are you seeing? I have seen it change. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I, was moderating a panel a few years ago and somebody said, yeah, but it's all better now, right? Like that stuff doesn't happen anymore. And I just like literally had to laugh in his face. I couldn't help <laughs> myself. But I mean, look, there's still all these, you know, you still hear stories, but I think there's more women in the industry and they are, you know, give, putting out their hand to other women and that perpetuates more opportunities. Um, I think, I actually think like us all being home too, <laughs> Yeah. It's like the great leveler, you know, like nobody's there. You can't, you know, it's like we're all working in this weird way. And maybe that has sort of eliminated some of the weirdness in some ways. But yeah. I mean, I, I think I just see more women playing instruments, more women working in the music industry. It's becoming more accepted in a lot of different ways. Um, there's more like, you know, the opposite, like people won't tolerate bad behavior yeah. um, the way that they used to. Mm -hmm. So I, I do see an evolution. I mean, I like I said before, I can't say it's all better. We're all good. We're done. Yeah. But um, but it's you know, it's I think it's moving in the right direction. That's good to hear. You know. Yeah. yeah. There's still more work to be done. There's still more work to be done. But 
But it's great. I mean, we don't just do the She Rocks Awards. We do panels and showcases. And, you know, we just did a panel that was about songwriting and sync. Um, oh, wow. And it was so great. It was so good to... Um, we had like some really big songwriters and some people who are like work professionals working in sync um, and just like the advice and the ideas and the openness to like giving other right. people their thoughts um, so that they could give other women and other anybody in the industry like a leg up. I think that that attitude is great. Like I, I love creating a platform for that. I was going to ask about, um, I think, I think you've done this before in the past. You produced uh, a She Rocks album of, of uh, women uh, guitarists. Am I wow. correct? I that? wasn't the producer, but I did work on the project with the producer. Um, it was actually uh, called She Rocks Volume One. That was came wow. out maybe in like 2017 or something like that. Um, it was on Steve Vai's label, and I worked with the producer was Brad Talinsky, who used to be the editor of Guitar World, who I'm very friendly with. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked together to identify like these really great female players and i actually did the album artwork for that so all right <laughs> there we go yeah which was really wow. fun um and uh we did like help distribute it and get the word out about it and it, and we had like a bunch of the players on the album come to the she rocks awards that year really and, like play their tracks from the album so that oh, was really great. fun yeah yeah that's gotta be so fun. any plans wow. for doing that again more with new new guitar players or I just mean, maybe <laughs> we're, we're sort of like talked about it, but um, Steve doesn't have the label anymore, so oh. we would have to find a new home for it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was really, it was a really cool project. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest with me, I don't have like a ton of experience in the whole record creating part of the industry, but um, but I do, you know, I I also write um, about music for Parade Magazine, so I do listen to like tons and tons of music that gets submitted to me. And I do love identifying like really great talent. When I hear somebody that's really different and special, like I'm like, oh, I'm, I get so excited about it. So you were talking about blues, and my I have a very dear friend named Rory Block. Uh, yeah, who's outrageous blues. I know Rory she's since awesome. the sixties. We're very yeah. close friends, and uh, she's an amazing guitarist. She should be involved with what you do, uh, your award thing somewhere. Because yeah, she is amazing. Yeah, I interviewed yeah. her once for guitar for my guitar. Oh, you did! Blog. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Way back yeah. when, when I was doing that, yeah. But she's um, she is a unique talent too. I, you know, I, I have never seen anybody play like her, and the way she, you know, interprets the blues is mm -hmm. really special. And, and her and, life, the way she was brought up, was she, you know, she her father was a fiddle player at Allen Block, and he uh, was friends with uh, Seeger, uh, Pete Seeger. Hmm. And then she, so she was brought up with like Rick von Schmidt and meeting all these famous people yeah. and folk. And, and then she learned, I think, slight guitar from um, John Hammond. And wow. so her her life is amazing. And then she did a, she did a tour with Cindy Cashdollar, another great guitarist. Mm -hmm. I, we interviewed yeah. her on radio. Cindy Cashdollar. She's another one that's amazing. Yeah, awesome. But, but you were talking about blues, so it's tying it in where you're getting into this blues thing and they're in that blues area, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many great players and there's there's a lot of really great female blues players yeah. these days. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty kick-ass. <laughs> Wait, can I say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can say whatever, sure. <laughs> But I, I yeah. mean, I also, I also found just like writing, um, and and like you know, creating all these projects that men love, really love it too. Like they love to see a really great female player. They love to get involved. We have so many male supporters of the events and things that we do. Mm. Um, men come to the awards. Like it's, I think it's just really inspiring for everybody. And I think like when you see a great player, like who cares what they are, men, right. women, well, whatever. Well. Yeah. Uh, it, and isn't isn't that part of the the uh, irony, I guess, of the whole story is that I, I'm a recording artist and guitarist and musician myself. I can't imagine the music that has sustained me and the and the industry without the contributions of women. It's 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 mm. not something that is even marginal. It's it's essential. It's part of the lifeblood right. of the industry, right. and yet there there's still 
uh, challenges and discrimination in that and, and artists having to prove their value when in the big picture, we can't live without them. We, we can't create, right, it's, right. we can't have an industry without, without everyone, without all artists, no matter who they are. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, like if you've seen, like there's been research done by like Fender and Guitar Center over the last few years showing that, you know, over 50% of the people buying guitars are women. So, I mean, you, I think wow. that that's part of the reason why you see a lot more, um, you know, women playing. I think that the beginner market, there's a lot of, there's a lot of young women who don't think like, oh, that's a guy thing. They're just like, yeah. oh, I like that song. I heard Taylor Swift playing. I heard this, whatever. Um, and nobody, you know, they don't feel that same stigma that maybe my generation did where I was like, oh, no, that's a guy thing you know, um, or somebody else told them it was a guy thing. So I think that there's like that migration as well. And I think any smart company in the industry would want to, um, you know, broaden, like who are they representing when they're doing, you know, their ads or their websites or whatever, um, their clinics and shows that they sponsor and all of that, because that's how you like widen who's interested in what you're doing. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got off on uh, I for some reason I, when I did radio, um, I got off on interviewing a lot of drummers. And one drummer, female drummer, that I always get off on. I think she's amazing. Which she's part of what you or your event was Sheila Sheila E. And, and Sheila started with Prince, and then she evolved into her own what we're talking about into her own thing, right? Yeah. She's an amazing musician, Sheila E. She is. And, you know, it's interesting when, when we honored her, I think it was only our second year or something that we yeah. were doing the She Rocks Awards. And I got to sit down with her for a while and, and chat with her. And um, she is such an inspiring person, never mind mm -hmm. player. I mean, yeah. you see her play and you're like blown away because she's her energy is so, so big and, and so confident. Right. Mm -hmm. But just to like, just to talk to her, like she's had a great career, she's had a great life, and so, so inspiring and so, so skilled in, in so many ways. Like she's, she seems like the kind of person who would be just open to like, oh, let's try this, let's try that, you know. Yeah. Um, I just saw her on something too. I don't even remember really? what it was. It was like a cameo on something, and I'm like, oh my god, there's Sheila. Like she's, she's <laughs> out there in the world doing cool stuff. Incredible. And I think drummer. she inspired. So many people like yeah. there aren't that many female drummers right that everybody knows uh, right? you had the go-go's involved they're in the rock yeah. and roll hall of fame now the go-go's yeah you know, it was funny because we had been trying to get them we had been trying to honor them like for several years and it was just really hard to get them in one place because they live yeah all over the place and you know we did it last year when we did the the virtual she rocks awards because they could be anywhere so you know belinda was in i don't know Singapore or something. So, um, <laughs> but it was really great because we we actually interviewed all of them individually, and then we all got on Zoom together. And um, you know, they have some new music out, and and they um, they're they're just like there's I think they're still trendsetters. Like they don't let age stop them. They don't right, let anything right. stop them. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. like they're like we're doing <laughs> we're we're making music and we're having fun. Yeah. And um, they've written some amazing books too about their life and. You know, I, I recently saw there was like a photo book that one of them did. I can't remember which one, um, but it, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've gotten I've got to meet so many of these great, inspiring women, and they're just they're just they're just down to earth, cool people. You know. Yeah, and I think uh, the other yeah. I want to bring up another name, Susie Quattro. I, yeah, I really, that's a great one. Great one you have in there. Susie is like she's like a force in nature. <laughs> you know, like she is, she is, she will like, she can carry a room, man. That woman wow. is so like, talk about not caring about anything, age, whatever. Don't, don't mm -hmm. put any restraints on Susie. Like she could wow. do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, great. That's so yeah. funny. Cause I remember like, you know, seeing her on TV, like when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. So when it, when is the next event? When is your next? Yeah, uh, so she rock? we were going to do it in January, but the Nam show, who like we sort of are adjunct to the Nam show, that got moved to June. Yeah. So our next show is June second. Um, we're doing it at a venue called the Ranch in Anaheim, 
Um, and we're working on the program right now. We had to kind oh, of start great. over, you know, like once Nam moved their date, we were like, okay, like we had started working on January, yeah. but now we're going to move it to June. And I, I'm kind of glad because like the way things are going in the world right now, I think it's yeah. Yeah. kind of tough to do it in January. And in June, there's a lot more, like we can use a lot of the open spaces around the venue. And um, like I said, just be more thoughtful about what's going on in the world. So June 2nd, it's a Thursday night. It'll be the first time we're on Thursday night, but it's the night before the NAMM show opens. And um, I think it's going to be really exciting. We have a few things in the works that I can't really talk about yet. So how does, how does one connect with you guys uh, out there, people out there, how, how do you have a, yeah, uh, tell I mean, us the information? The, right. The best thing to do is to go to our website. It's the women.com, which is T H E W I M N standing for the women's international music network. So the women.com, um, or if you just want information about the award show, there's she rocks awards.com as well. But if you just go on the women.com sign up for our newsletter, you will get all the information about all the different events we're doing, all the opportunities we have. I mean, we're, we sort of share, um, events all the other women's organizations are doing too so we were kind of a hub for all everything going on for women in music um so you know if you um want any you know to see any panels or have the opportunity to submit for an opportunity to need to play or whatever um just sign up for the newsletter it's free and wow. um then you can find out what we have going on i talk about diversity too not just gender diversity but i think yeah. you know there's there's that too, like, of course. I, I mean, my part of the industry, musical instrument part that I've been, that's my bread and butter, Yeah, is not very diverse at all. Um, mm. Gender, racial, everything. So I think that there's work, still work to be done in a lot of areas yeah. to like broaden who participates in the industry. And I think that's a good thing, like for us to work on, you know? Right, right. So what got you into music yourself? What kind of musicians do you get into? I mean, music that you yeah. get into. Well, you know, I, I, I was born like with music in my blood. <laughs> <I think laughs> Good, yeah. Uh, my family are accountants, and I was like, oh. what do you do with me? <laughs> oh, wow. So I play guitar. I'm a songwriter. I'm a singer songwriter. Oh, wow. I have an album really? coming out this year that's like wow. for uh, for girls. It's called Girl, the album, oh. and it's uh, an album of songs that I co-wrote that are um, focused oh, on inspiring girls and young women and. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I also just, you know, I'm like a, I'm like a kind of old school singer songwriter person, <laughs> <laughs> but the album's pop songs. I wrote it with a young, like pop writer. So right, she's awesome. right, right, right. Like she's yeah, great. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, it's really funny because since COVID hit, I used to go to open mics all the time. Like that was how I felt my tribe was out there at the open oh, yeah. mics hanging out, just playing acoustic guitar and singing and having some fun. And I haven't really taken it you know, super seriously, because that's like, that was my, my outlet, you know, my creative mm -hmm. outlet. Um, but now that I've been home so much, I, I haven't been as creative. It's been, hmm. it's been kind of hard to, I guess, let go of work and have some right. fun. And, and the other project I'm working on now is like, <laughs> it's, um it's interesting. I've been working in partnership with Holly Knight. Do you know her? She's a, she's like a top, Top songwriter. She wrote wow. hits for Pat, Pat Benatar and Tina Turner. She wow. wrote like Invincible and Unbelievable. Um, Simply the Bus and all that. So she and I and another partner, Lisa Forehan, who's a filmmaker, mm -hmm. um, got together and created a partnership. And we're putting we put together this band of amazing female players. Wow. Um, and we produce some tracks, and um, it's going to be debuting in 2022. So excellent. Um. The songs are so good. I'm so oh, excited really? for that to I gotta get a, the world. Oh, this, and the players uh, are like crazy good. So, are you going to yeah. do a CD or a vinyl on that? Or Yeah, yeah, there will be. Do yeah. a vinyl. Oh, so it's goodness. good to have you on, Laura, and we yeah, wish you the thanks best. Yeah, so much. And uh, yeah. maybe along the line, we'll bring you on again as the uh, oh. thing progresses, you know? I'd be happy to come back. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Great to chat with you.